Hello, my name is Maureen Lamb. I am the Language Department Chair, Academic Technology Coordinator, and Latin, Ancient Greek, and Mythology teacher at the Kingswood Oxford School in West Hartford, Connecticut. Today, I'd like to talk about how I used Quizlet during remote learning. I used Quizlet in many ways, and I used it for many years before remote learning. I would say that I use Quizlet probably daily in each of my classes. I use it for a number of different things. I use it for review so that students can go over flashcards, not only at their own pace, but using whatever different method they feel comfortable reviewing. I also use Quizlet Live, and Quizlet Live used to be kind of a fun class competition, but really using it in Zoom breakout rooms with groups or using it as individual became a really fun way to create classroom community when students had to be either separate or socially distanced. And I would also say it's a great way to differentiate learning. Students can use Quizlet to review what they need to review. And at the same time, they can look through for sets that might be useful to them that they don't have to make. So either they make have teacher made sets, they can make their own sets, or they can look for sets that will be useful to them. So there's a lot of different options for how they can use Quizlet. So I'm gonna go over some of my favorite ways to use Quizlet during remote learning. And we are going to start off with flashcards. I started using Quizlet for flashcards many years ago now. And I first started using it because I thought it was a great tool to bring flashcards online. My students were forever losing their physical flashcards as they were carrying them around with them. And I thought it was great that they could access their flashcards from a device. They could flat access from their computer, or later on they could access it from their cell phones. And that was so easy for them. And there's also the Quizlet app that they could use which is also available offline, which is amazing. And so there are many different reasons to use Quizlet for the primary function I used to use it for, which is flashcards. But over the years, I've come to realize that Quizlet really transforms flashcards. It does more than just what a flashcard would do. And let's go over a little bit about that. So this would be an example of a flashcard set that I would make for students. So this is the ancient Greek gods in Greek. I have the name of the ancient Greek god, and then I have a definition. And you can add different things to this. So for example, if I go into edit here, I could, for example, add an image. And so it comes up as Zeus. And if you put in Jupiter, the planet will come up. So you can put in Jupiter God, and then the Greek God comes up. And so it'll give you an image, or you can upload your own image either way. And so that's really simple. Another thing you can do is you can actually add audio. So if I wanted to add audio for this term, I could here switch to the term, and then I would just hold my space bar to record Zeus, and that would be done. It's extremely simple. I was explaining this to one of my colleagues the other day about how simple it is to create audio for flashcards in Quizlet because they didn't know about it. And so it was really cool to show how easy it would be. I've also done this with my students. I've had students create their own flashcard sets and add their own audio so that number one, I could check their pronunciation. Or if I was having them do flashcards for larger themes, they could give an example of that theme or they could explain it a little bit more just by using the record button with their space bar. And so again, students would need to account for that, but I think it's a really cool option for them to have. Another thing that is in beta right now for flashcards is to use these multiple choice options. So let's say I wanted to give options that might be reasonable options, especially as students are testing themselves. So for Zeus, I might put not only Jupiter, but I might put Poseidon or Mars or someone they might mix it up with. And so then when students would do these options, they wouldn't just be doing it with the options from the whole Quizlet set, but they would be using the multiple choice options that the teacher or the student had added. So I think that's a really great feature here. Another thing to point out is when you are using a language with a script other than English, like I'm using Greek here, you can actually have a drop down keyboard. And when I do this in Latin as well, I get all of the macrons that I would need, which are the accent marks in Latin, so that when I'm writing the language, it is really easy for me to write it. And it recognizes the language as soon as I start typing, which is very cool. So as soon as I start typing a Greek character, it will recognize that as Greek. Or if I start typing a Latin word, it will recognize that as Latin. So I think that's a really cool function. Another great thing about Quizlet is that it is extremely easy to search for what you want. 
So for example, this is about the Greek gods. And so I was able to search this, find this from Magister Pearsall, and I was able to copy it so that I could share it with my own students. So I could take something someone else had made and easily copy it over. And it was exactly what I wanted. It was the names of the Greek gods then defined in Greek. So I was able to find what I wanted and it was extremely easy. I just went up to the search bar and search for what I wanted in Greek. And so you can search, you'll find a lot of things. So for example, if I were to look up again, Greek gods, I'm sure tons of different things would come up. And so you could see different Greek gods. You could see it with pictures. You could see it with different definitions. There's one that I'm doing. Um, and you just get a lot of different things and you can look through find something that works for you. You can even find something that's close to what you want. You can copy it to your own Quizlet sets and then you can edit it to make it exactly what you want. So one of the great things too about Quizlet is when you're creating Quizlet sets, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can look around and see if you can find something that is close to what you want that you can tailor to make what you need for your classes. Another thing I like about Quizlet is how easy it is to share. So for example, you go here to share and you have so many different options. Here you can add emails of people that you want to share it with. You can also just copy and paste the link. And if you copy the link here, it's saved and you can, you can paste it anywhere you'd like. You can also share it right to Google Classroom. That's what I usually do with my students. I find that because we're a Google school and because we use Google Classroom, that's what makes most sense for me. I've also used Remind in the past, especially if I think students are not going to check their email over the weekend or if they're not gonna check their classroom over the weekend, but I really wanna make sure they have time to look at this Quizlet set. I could send it over Remind. And so this would be something where I'm using Remind to send it to students' phone numbers where I don't have their phone numbers and they don't have my phone number. We're just using the system. It's made largely for teachers to share and we can share the links back and forth, which is really nice. Um, and I find that very helpful. You can also use this with Microsoft Teams. So those are all different ways you can easily share Quizlet sets. I also use Quizlet with my students as a way to curate translations. When I go over a translation in class with students, sometimes I'm not sure if they completely understood it or I'm not sure if they needed to review something more, especially in remote learning where I wasn't seeing my students every day. And so I found that it was extremely helpful to have these translation sets that I would share with students after the fact so they could go over it. I would often assign these as homework or as part of differentiated learning. Then I would usually play Quizlet Live with students just to see what they understood and see if people had any questions about it. And so here I have the Greek over here and I have the, what the Greek says, the translation of the Greek on this side. And I've actually bolded all of the verbs here so that students can tell what the action in the sentence is so they can take a look at that and see how that is working. And so again, then my students could go over this on their own. They could choose one of the options up here. They could choose one of the study options. And I like the study options a lot because there are a lot of different options for them to choose. And also that they are untimed options if students want to choose that. And there are also the play options, which are the timed options, Match Gravity and Quizlet Live. So those are all really good ways of doing that, but it's a way that I like to use translations with students. Here's an example of how I might use a diagram with my students. Because I'm a language teacher, I use all sorts of pictures in my classes. So I could use this to kind of blur out faces in a picture or have students identify who different people are in a picture. But here I wanna talk about something specific where I take a screenshot of a text and then I have students define what is missing from the text. I'll show you how I do this. So what I do is first I take a screenshot of what I'm doing. And so I take a screenshot of the text and this didn't have blanks when I put it in here. I created those blanks. And so what I did was I uploaded the screenshot and then I went to edit. And then I created these blanks by using the blur out text on the image. So you can do that by you know, blurring like that. So you take it and you run that over there and it blurs it out so that students can't see it. And I'm not gonna save this one. But um, what I did then was after I blurred out the text, and oh, I blurred out a lot of text. So I'm just gonna get out of there and cancel. After I did that, I added these points on the text. 
And so when I added the points, then I added definitions to those points. And so what I was trying to do is have students predict. Here, I'll show you how I do that. So, Galia est omnis divisa in partes tres. The definition of that's three. And so now I've added that point. And now students would have to identify what would come next in that text. It would be a predictive. So this is one of the ways that I would use diagrams in a language class to have students predict what vocabulary might come next. And so that's been really useful for me. I find that that's a really fun one. Another one is just having students say the definition of words in context, or I could even do blur out a whole line of text and have students try to figure out which line comes next to, to blur out a couple of lines and see if they can understand the order of events or the sequence of how things go. So those are all different options. Here's another example of how I use diagrams. I took a picture of a Greek statue and I had students define the different parts of the Greek face. And so I had students look up the hair, the eyebrow, the chin, the nose, and then I played Quizlet Live to see how students figured out this. And so this is something that you could use with your students. You could also do a picture, a piece of art, where you're trying to have students identify who the characters are that are being portrayed in that art. You could use cartoons, I've done this in the past, and have students identify what's going on in each section of cartoon if you're going to do kind of a comic strip type of cartoon. You could use it with just about any picture you can think of, as well as using text like I did. Um, you could, if you're a math teacher, you could do problems. You could have students say what different parts of the problems are, or if different diagrams. Anything you can really think of that you can use as a visual image that you can add dots to, you can use here. Another thing I've done in the past too is use a map. And so I would upload a blank map and then have students tell me what the different locations are on that map using those dots. So a lot of different options and the best way to learn how to do it, I would say, is to go in and play with it. Go in, upload a photo, go through, see how you add the dots, see how you can blur things out using the kind of thing that looks like a world and really experiment and see what works for you and what works for your students. One of the things I talked about before was how much I like to use Quizlet Live. I like to use it in the classroom as a way for students to kind of review and have it be a little bit competitive and fun, but it became even more important during remote learning. I use Zoom when I teach to students, and so what I would do is I would put students in breakout room groups, and then students would work, at, work with the students in that breakout room group and their teams in Quizlet Live as they were doing it. And it was just a wonderful way to have camaraderie and to have students make those social connections and really give them a way to talk to each other and kind of come together around something. The other thing I really liked was when there was also individual mode. I had some classes that really were starved for working with each other and loved doing it in the groups. And I had some classes that really had students loving being individuals and doing it against each other. And so really, I think it depended on the mood of the students. It depended on what they wanted to do at that time, but I loved that there were those options. Another thing that I think makes Quizlet stand out from a lot of the other kind of play apps out there is that there's anonymity built into it with giving students the different animals. And they also really loved it because the animals are in Latin, if it's for one of my Latin classes. And so I think that was really fun for them. But also that when they're looking at the scoreboard and when I was projecting it on Zoom during remote learning, it wasn't like, oh, you know, Johnny is here at the bottom and Mary's here at the top, but it was, oh, you know, the bears are at the top and the dragonflies are at the bottom or something like that. And I think that made it kind of more fun for them in some ways because I think first of all it was anonymous as to who was winning and so that that lent an air of mystery to the whole thing but also I think it kind of gave kids a break who weren't doing as well and so that they wouldn't feel embarrassed I think it's the same thing as kind of when you let students choose backgrounds in zoom or you have students turn off their camera I think giving them kind of something where they don't have to be kind of out there front and center was really important during remote learning and I think I'll continue using Quizlet Live just because it's fun, but also because I love that aspect of it for them. So let's go through a little bit of what Quizlet Live would look like to set up. So you can either, again, do teams 
or individual mode. And when you have a teacher account, you can choose what type of flashcard you'd like. Usually what I like to do as a language teacher is use the target language and then have um, students define it in their primary language, but it's really completely up to you. Then once you do that, you have students put in the code. And this was really easy using Google Meet or Zoom. I would just copy and paste that code and put it in the chat box. There are a lot of different options for joining though. You can also copy the game link and send it to players. So you could send this over Remind, you could send this over email, whatever worked for you. Or you can even put the game link in Google Classroom or whatever your learning management system is. You could also have students use the QR code just depending on what you were doing. And so oftentimes I would share my screen for this too. So if students wanted to do that, that was fine. Uh, what caveat I would say is when you're doing it, if you want students to see your faces, what I do is I usually use two computers so that I have the thing I'm doing, like the projected thing on one computer, and then I have the other thing on the other computer, just because it's easier to keep track of, but it's really up to you. You can also um, use the app. You can have students use the app on their phones too, so they can be on co their computer on Zoom and using the Quizlet app, which is really nice. So they're in the breakout rooms, looking at each other, talking to each other while they're using the app. So they're using the two devices to play. And so I think that's really fun and it can be, it can be, it can be an adventure for them. Um, I really love using Quizlet Live. Like I said, I probably use it every day in my classes before remote learning, and now I will continue to do it throughout remote learning. Just because of the community building aspect of it, the way it protects anonymity but makes it really fun, and also that there's there's a lot of different options for joining too. They can use on their phones, they can use their computers, whatever they want to do, and it's usually really fun. Next, I wanted to talk about the benefits of the different types of Quizlet accounts. You can use Quizlet for absolutely free. You can create your own sets. You will not have rich text. You will um, be able to add pictures, but you will not be able to add custom audio. So there, there are some real advantages to using the paid accounts for Quizlet. I would say that I've had a paid account for many years now, and I have not been dissatisfied at all. I would actually say it's one of the cheaper ones out there. And for the amount you're spending, you're getting a lot. So here are some of the benefits that you get if you're going to do Quizlet Teacher. So you would get the multiple choice options that we talked about. So you can have a term and you can add your own multiple choice feed question answers so that when students are going through it, they get the answers that you put in there. That way you can make it a little more difficult or uh, tailor it to what that term would be a little bit more. And so I think that's really, really powerful. I also think that being able to track student progress, especially with remote learning would be really, really helpful. So being able to create a class within Quizlet and be able to see what students are doing within Quizlet when they make accounts can be really helpful to track student progress and to see which ones are getting wrong and which ones you can review in the class more. So I think everyone benefits from having student progress be something that teachers can access. Also being able to adapt Quizlet Live, like I was showing before with Quizlet Live, I like to do the target language to the English definitions, but you can change it back and forth, but you only have that option to adapt if you have the paid account. You can also organize your classes, which is nice, and the class number is unlimited, which is exciting. And you can have um, ads removed when you create the classes, which is super cool. You can also create custom images, so not just the images you search, but you can also upload your own images to terms like we were talking about before. And also, as I showed before, you can create your custom audio, like I said, so easy, just clicking that space bar. So I think that's a real benefit. Also being able to add rich text. I would say that there are not many apps that allow teachers to use rich text, and I think it can be really useful. Like you saw in the Greek um, vocabulary flashcards, I was bolding the verb, but you can do a lot of different things. And I also like the highlights are blue, pink, and yellow, because those are colors that are so dissimilar that they're not going to present many challenges for students to differentiate between things. So you could even do flashcard sets, and I have done, where you have students identify vocabulary in context, identify grammar in context, or identify, identify main ideas of something that you've highlighted if you're going to put a lot of text on a, on a card. So just going through and seeing what you think, of what would use, be useful mostly for you. You can also create very detailed diagrams with more points. You're limited in the number of points you can use on a diagram with the unpaid account. 
It can also help if you can scan documents to create sets within the app. So there's a lot of different options and a lot of different ways that Quizlet Teacher can be a real benefit and can be really, really helpful. For students, they could get a subscription to Quizlet Plus, and I really recommend that my students do this because there are so many great options with it. They can have offline access to their vocabulary flashcards. They can download them, they can have access to them when they have limited internet, and they can go through them. And so I think that's a really powerful thing. I also like that there is ad-free studying for students. Additionally, they can create diagrams with multiple points, just like teachers can. So that can be really useful if I want students to study for a map quiz or study a picture or something like that. Also, students can scan in documents and that makes it a lot faster for them. They can also add that rich text so they can add the highlight, the bold, italicized, the underlining, so they can create that within their own text sets. Finally, they can also customize images by uploading their own images, or like I was talking about before, they can actually customize the audio. So they can take something that they've created and add audio to it so easily, or they can take something that you have created and they can add audio to that as well. And they can show the, how, their how their pronunciation is. They can also explain a term in greater detail using the audio feature. So that's something to keep in mind as they're creating sets, they could add audio so that you can get that additional feedback to see what they're understanding through their use of the audio. The least expensive option would be to have students get Quizlet Go. And so this would be available on phone or a tablet. And so this would allow just for that offline access and for that ad-free studying. And I know I have some students that really like this and like the benefits of this. And this is the least expensive version, but it's also something that gives them the options for these two things, which I find very valuable. So there's a lot of different options for what they want to do with Quizlet if they choose to have a paid account. So for all of those reasons, Quizlet has been my go-to tool during remote learning. I have used it because it's easy to use. You can create your own things. Students can create their own things. You can find things and edit things that work best for you. And you can do a lot of different options. We talked about the options of doing something that's similar to traditional flashcards that like you can add audio and pictures to. We talked about using it for translations. We talked about using it for diagrams. And we talked about the many ways you can use Quizlet, such as having students do things at their own pace, following students' progress through classes, and using Quizlet Live to create classroom community and have students preserve anonymity while having a kind of a fun competition environment. I often use it with my students in Zoom breakout rooms. It's just a great way to get students talking to each other as well. I will continue to use Quizlet probably on a daily basis in my classes. And that's because it's easy to use, it's fun to use, and students really enjoy it. So thanks for watching. Feel free to reach out with any questions. I'm on Twitter at Latin Tech Tools, and I am happy to share ideas. Thanks so much.